Uh, I represent the International Powered Access Federation, uh, commonly uh, termed IPATH, and we're an international trade association whose members comprise manufacturers, rental and training companies, users, and stakeholders of the powered access industry, which is every work platforms and mass climbers. And our mission is to promote the safe and effective use of powered access equipment. Next. Uh, just to give you a brief uh, summary of who I am, I, I am, as I stated, IPAS North American representative. I am the Executive Vice President of AWPT, Inc., which is IPAS wholly owned subsidiary uh, that offers operator training through our members. I am on the ANSI A92 main committee, and I am a subcommittee member for the A92.3, 0.5, and 0.6 subcommittees. I'm on the Scaffold Industry Association's Area Work Platform Council, and I am a 31-year veteran of the rental industry. Next. Uh, I wanted to start today uh, as we're focusing specifically on uh, the need for fall protection and uh, want to generally give you a kind of an overview. And to begin with, today's presentation is just that. It's an overview of the OSHA fall protection regulations as it's applicable to area work platforms. Uh, this is not a substitute for complete training, uh, which is required for this topic, but rather provides awareness of topics and issues that one should address when using personal fall protection with an area work platform. Uh, we're going to review uh, the summary of regulations and standards. We're going to address an OSHA letter of interpretation that brought uh, focus on this issue in the industry review an industry best practice standard, and then at the end allow time for questions and answers. As we look at the uh, top five uh, items that I put on, on the board, and I purposefully uh, only put the top five of ten most frequently cited uh, as they are pertinent to today's topic on fall protection. It is also worth noting that both scaffolding and ladders are included in most cited standards and are also involved with falls. This fact adds to the growing use of area work platforms uh, in our industry today. Falls continue to be a leading cause of work-related injuries and fatalities, and it's a hazard of primary focus for OSHA and a hazard that all employers need to address with workplace safety. Next. The OSHA standards uh, 1926-501 is the duty to have fall protection. This is the only OSHA standard that uses the term duty as falls continue to be a leading cause of workplace injuries. And as we stated earlier, an increased focus on this needs to be made to protect workers from this hazard. ANSI has recently developed a series of standards on fall protection to better address this topic that we'll discuss a little later. As you can see within 1926-501, it covers most construction workers, identifies areas of activities where fall protection is needed, and sets a uniform threshold of height of six foot uh, where fall protection is allowed. It allows employers to select fall protection means as best suited for the work being performed. Next. When most people think about fall protection, it's generally thought of within the five main means of protecting for fall protection, which are guardrail systems, safety net systems, personal fall arrest systems, positioning devices, and or warning line systems. As highlighted, we're going to focus in on personal fall arrest systems. Next. Fall arrest systems are comprised of a harness, a lanyard, connectors, and anchors. And summarizing some of the points in the OSHA standard, uh, they shall be inspected prior to each use. The attachment point on the body shall be in the center of the wearer's back. You'll limit the fall to six feet and prevent contact with lower surfaces. 
which is a key item for you to uh, recall as we get into the letter of interpretation. It has a limit maximum deceleration distance of three and a half feet. It limits maximum arresting forces on employees to 1,800 pounds when used with a body harness. And anchorages must be capable of supporting at least 5,000 pounds or designed to carry twice the potential impact energy of an employee free falling a distance of six feet. And when you look up above, you see the limited maximum arresting force of employees 1,800 pounds. That would equate to an, a 3,600 pound design load when you have a specifically designed anchorage. As you will find with uh, manufacturers of area work platforms providing anchorage points. Then we have body belts and other positioning devices are not part of a personal fall arrest system. And particularly, we're saying an arrest system, body belts, and other positioning devices are not approved. Next. Often the term fall arrest system is used when it is more appropriately to be speaking about personal fall protection, incorporating both a restraint or an arrest system. A fall restraint system is a system that allows the employee to fall zero to a lower distance. There is no fall. A body belt may be used with a fall restraint system because there is no fall. A fall arrest system is a system that secures the personnel to an anchorage point using a lanyard short enough to prevent the fall more than six feet and may use an energy absorber to ensure that the maximum force of 1,800 pounds and cannot come in contact with a lower surface. It is important to additionally recognize that when you have a fall arrest, you will then require to have fall rescue. And the employer shall provide for prompt rescue of personnel in the event of a fall or shall ensure that the employees are able to rescue themselves. Next. Just giving an overview of personal fall protection as it refers to uh, or is used with aerial work platforms that, or as the acronym AWP applies throughout. The guardrail system is the primary fall protection system on an aerial work platform. The employers must direct and monitor the operators of the aerial work platform to ensure that all components of the guardrail system are in place. A personal fall protection system either fall arrest to protect against the potential effects of ejection or fall restraint to prevent a fall from the platform is required on all boom type area work platforms. The selection of the personal fall protection system is the responsibility of the employer and must be provided free of charge to employees authorized to occupy an area work platform. The, fall, the personal fall protection system that should be must be attached to an approved anchorage and the employer shall provide for prompt rescue. Next. Continuing with the OSHA regulations, it is important to read the manufacturer's recommendations, both the personal fall protection manufacturer on how the equipment may be used and the area work platform manufacturer on their recommendations incorporated with the OSHA regulations. You may find that an aerial work platform manufacturer only provides a restraint anchorage and thus eliminates the option for an arrest system to be used with the equipment. In the standards 1910.67C25, a body belt shall be worn and a lanyard attached to the boomer basket when working with an aerial from an aerial platform. It's important to recognize the been changes with this and uh, that you need to be aware that uh, uh, the attachment to the boom or basket is only allowed to be attached to the anchorage point provided by the aerial lift manufacturer. So you just can't attach uh, any place on the platform that you wish boom or basket. It has to be an anchorage point designed to hold the load. And Further, the body belt shall be worn and the lanyard attached to the boomer basket when working from the area lift and 
this has been changed and as of 1998 providing that the body belts are not acceptable as part of a personal full arrest system. The use of a body belt and tethering system it is acceptable only uh, with a restraint system as defined in the regulation. Next. The OSHA regulations continue uh, saying that without, uh, throughout subpart M, which is the full protection standard, and here are a couple of excerpts, uh, must be rigged in a way that the employee can neither fall more than six feet nor contact the lower surface. So it's important to realize that if the employee is uh, eight foot above the ground and he has a full protection system that allows him to fall 10 feet, will obviously come in contact with the lower surface prior to him being uh, stopped from the fall, which is obviously no good. And that's the important part of that uh, particular regulation. Uh, it requires prompt rescue in time to prevent serious injuries to workers and requires that the employer provide training for the employee who will be exposed to the fall. The program will enable the employees to recognize hazards of falling and shall train each employee in the procedures, use, inspection, maintenance of fall protection systems to be used. A competent person is required to oversee a fall protection plan and must be aware of all the regulations, standards, safe use practices, and manufacturers' requirements that apply. Next. The ANSI aerial lift standards, which are the A92 series of standards, have specific language on personal fall protection requirements. Uh, many people believe that uh, you are required to wear personal fall protection on all types of equipment. However, the use of approved personal fall protection equipment is required on A92.2, which is vehicle-mounted elevating and rotating devices, and A92.5, boom-supported elevating work platforms. Both A92.2 and A92.5 are boom-type lifts. The use of approved personal fall protection equipment is not required on A92.3, which are, are manually propelled elevating work platforms, which are typically the push-around type area work platforms, and A92.6 self-propelled elevating work platforms, which are commonly termed as scissor lifts. The A92 standards apply to all area work platforms. A copy of the appropriate manual of responsibility must be in every machine in addition to the manufacturer's operations manual. Both OSHA and ANSA require personal fall protection use with boom type lifts only. Next. Beyond the ANSI A92 series for area work platforms, the ANSI Z359 is a family of standards that expands beyond fall arrest into other work applications. So this is a complete series of standards that focus in on the broad topic of personal fall protection. So it's much more detailed and goes beyond the scope of area work platform use. And anyone who has employees who are exposed to falls need to be aware of the ANSI fall protection standards uh, and apply them as necessary when using area work platforms. Next. It's important to recognize, especially when we're talking about fall arrest, that an arrest says that a body is going to fall. And prompt rescue is a, a critical issue when using an arrest system to plan for prompt rescue. The moment of an accident is not a time to be thinking about how you're going to rescue a fallen worker. Next. Both the uh, OSHA and ANSI standards have been in existence uh, for some time, although the ANSI standards are uh, reviewed 
at least on a five-year basis. In 2009, OSHA came out with a letter of interpretation that, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, surprised the industry and simply restated, uh, entrance to an area where platform lifts occur at the ground and a full arrest system does not allow you to hit a lower surface. Restraint is required until you reach a height when personal fall protection system fall clearance is achieved. So this means that when uh, OSHA was asked this specific question, a six foot lanyard with a shock absorber, the aerial, excuse me, the uh, personal fall protection manufacturers define that system with a six foot person, a, a, a six foot lanyard, a shock absorber, requiring 18 and a half foot of clearance from the anchorage point to a lower surface before the system uh, uh, comes into full arrest. And if that 18 and a half foot is the design criteria for the manufacturer, is that a legal system or compliance system for use with area work platforms? And OSHA, through the letter of interpretation, said it is not. For obvious reasons, you will come in contact with a lower surface, and that's in violation to the OSHA standard. Next. So as a byproduct of that letter of interpretation, prior to that, the industry, including OSHA, addressed area work platform personal uh, fall protection uh, simply by your personal fall protection while in a, in a boom lift, you're compliant. Don't wear personal fall protection when it's being used, you're not compliant. After this letter of interpretation was issued, the means to compliance incorporates the use of appropriate personal fall protection equipment. And that kind of put the industry at a quandary, which is what personal fall protection equipment is compliant? Because a six-foot lanyard with an energy absorber was the most common personal fall protection used prior to this letter of interpretation being issued. Next. Next, thank you. To address this uh, change in the approach for personal fall protection when using area work platforms, five industry associations came together to assist users when using personal fall protection with aerial lifts. The American Rental Association, the Association of Equipment Manufacturers, the Association of Equipment Distributors, IPATH, and the Scaffold Industry Association collectively created a statement of best practices of personal fall protection systems for aerial platforms. That best practice is available free of download uh, from any one of the websites on this listing. You have the AWPT publication download uh, that you can secure this document from. In summary, this document provides definitions, situation analysis, uh, an overview of the uh, ANSI and OSHA compliance requirements and regulations, and personal fall protection system options that we'll review shortly for use with area work platforms, definitions of lanyard anchorages, and an overview of plans, planning to prevent falls and implementing fall protection systems, and in broad base uh, examples of do's and don'ts with area work platform fall protection. Next. It is clear to those of us in the industry that area work platforms are the safest and most productive means to place workers at height, providing that the correct area work platform is selected for the application, the operator is properly trained and familiarized with the equipment being authorized to use, the equipment is properly maintained, and the worker is supervised, monitored, and warned of potential hazards. Unlike ladders and scaffolding, there's no assembly, no climbing, which are potentially fall hazards, and it comes with a completely adjustable platform that is fully guardrail. Next.
With area work platforms, uh, it is stated in the standards and in the uh, regulations that the principal fall protection is provided by the guardrail system. The employer must direct and monitor the area work platform operator to ensure that all the components of the guardrail system are in place prior to operation. And only boom type lifts require additional personal fall protection to protect against the potential effects of ejection from what is known as the catapult effect. Next. Here is a um, safe use guidance which is put out by IPATH and AWPT which really uh, tries to uh, point to the risk of being thrown out of a boom type lift and the need to wear personal fall protection when you're in a boom type lift. Uh, we provide free stickers, what you see uh, on that, which is click it, to remind operators and occupants of an area work platform to wear it, click it, uh, connect when they are in a boom type lift wearing a personal fall protection. It is imperative uh, that people understand the reason that we use personal fall protection in addition to guardrails on a boom type lift is because of this catapult effect. You have a platform sitting on the end of a boom lift and that boom lift has a lot of movement and uh, uh, on our website you can actually see an example of a boom going over a curb and seeing the impact of a body uh, in a platform when it drives over that. And uh, every year there are several people who are actually thrown out of the platform, of a boom type platform when it's driving because of this catapult effect. Next. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, here are examples of uh, additional reasons for personal fall protection that add to uh, fall hazards. Improper use is another critical area that needs to be controlled on the job site to prevent fall hazards. If you're looking at the two top applications, you have a individual who exited the platform inappropriately uh, and uh, while he's operating uh, a boom type lift, if he falls, you'll see that there's a fall associated with a boom type lift. In the other picture, uh, interestingly enough, that's Brad Pitt. I don't know how we got his picture, but uh, may have been on, on a uh, movie site. But there he is with one of his children. Here's the operator and two occupants of the area work platform, none of them wearing uh, required personal fall protection. And then below you see two pictures of personnel climbing on top of the guardrails. And it's always interesting to see the uh, picture on the bottom right-hand corner, think safety, with an individual with uh, a scissor lift climbing on the guardrails. And for those of us who are, are, are uh, savvy to looking at these type of pictures, you see that the scissor arms are not fully ele elevated. So the lift had the capability of going up higher. But rather than do that, uh, he climbed on the guardrails to uh, reach whatever work he was doing. Next. And here's another picture, again, compliance with all safe use requirements are essential in addition to proper selection and use of personal fall protection. Uh, the picture on the top, you see uh, someone who has what I would consider an, a, a very long lanyard, and that may be a six-foot lanyard, may not be attached to the right anchorage point, climbing outside the platform. And because they're attached to this very large, massive piece of equipment, they believe that, that they're safe. And uh, unfortunately, there are other risk and hazards associated with it. Again, uh, you see the uh, cricket sticker reminding individuals to wear it and be compliant with all the rules and regulations that apply to safe use with an area work platform. Next. To address the proper selection of personal fall protection, uh, the best practice 
document that was referred to earlier provides several options, uh, suggested choices for use for personal fall protection when using an area work platform. You should note that all of the options include restraint. So restraint is going to be required when you're entering a platform from ground level as zero fall would be allowed. It is only when you reach higher elevations where the uh, calculated fall distance can be achieved allowing a fall arrest system to be used without hitting a lower surface that uh, the fall arrest system is able to be used. Next. Option one uh, is a fall restraint system exclusively using a short lanyard. And here you see a three-foot lanyard with an energy absorber. Can a restraint system that requires zero fall, can a restraint system have an energy absorber? And, it, and the answer is a restraint system can incorporate an energy absorber, but by definition it would not be needed as there is no fall allowed in a restraint system. So there are often times when someone will see a energy absorber in the system and say that it's non-compliant because it's a fall arrest system. But depending upon the overall length of the lanyard, uh, it can be used as a restraint system. Next. The section, second option is a fall restraint re and arrest system using a lanyard with an adjuster. Uh, if you see this, uh, this is a foot, you should go five foot maximum in length that's adjustable to three foot at its shortest length. You must keep in mind that there's a certain amount of overlap, so you have to get to the shortest length to be properly restrained and then figure out what the maximum allowable length is uh, with, the, with the adjuster on that lanyard. And for the, for the rule of thumb, five foot is about the maximum length uh, to get you to a three foot the short lanyard that would keep you in restraint. A built-in energy absorber should be used when an arrest lanyard is being used. And in this particular case, I would say that it should be uh, integrated into the lanyard as opposed to a separate item. If you add the energy absorber as a separate piece, you then need to calculate that as into the overall length uh, that you have prior to the fall. Next. The third option is a fall restraint, fall arrest using a double leg lanyard. And unfortunately, I couldn't get a picture that showed two different length uh, legs. But one leg must be short to be able to keep you into restraint, and the other leg long to keep you in proper, uh, and that should be arrest. The length will be determined by a competent person. So. In a similar fashion to the adjustable lanyard, the short lanyard would most likely be a three-foot length and the longer lanyard five-foot length. And you would connect uh, the lanyards uh, in conjunction with the uh, application that you are going to be working in. So when you're coming in from the ground level, you'd be in a restraint system with the short lanyard. And when you're in an elevated position, where no risk of hitting a lower surface uh, is in place, you can use the longer leg lanyard to give you more mobility in the platform. Next. And the last option uh, is a self-retracting lifeline, commonly uh, referred to as an SRL. And uh, you must make sure that the SRL manufacturer approves for the use with specific area work platform equipment. Uh, many times the self-retracting lifelines require the anchorage point to be above your shoulders. And obviously the anchorage point on an area work platform is not above your shoulders. So as a uh, byproduct, it is important for you to make sure that when you're choosing the self-retracting lifeline for this application, the self-retracting lifeline manufacturer specifically approves it 
and the guidance on how to use it when using it with an area work platform uh, piece of equipment. Uh, it is fast becoming a favorite choice due to the adjustment being automatic and it provides the lowest distance of potential fall as a restraint system and arrest system. Next. One thing that we highly recommend is that you use a risk assessment and fall protection plan whenever you're using fall protection equipment. And this needs to be completed for each job application by a competent person. Uh, so the question is, do you have a fall protection policy? What uh, is it written? And how does it apply to all fall hazards? Who are the uh, responsible parties? Uh, and the uh, broad uh, discussions about uh, performance reviews, uh, safe uh, use of the equipment, training programs in place. It, it encompasses all of the necessary elements that are required in using a fall protection plan. Next. And one thing that everyone needs to be aware of is that OSHA does have one regulation called 5A1, which is the General Duty Clause. And the General Duty Clause says that each employer shall furnish to each of his employees in employment a place free of recognized hazards that are causing or likely to cause death or serious physical harm to his employees. It is without question that falls are a known hazard in this industry. And it is the employer's responsibility to ensure that that's taken place. So if there is a fall and you have not addressed it properly to abate that action and risk, uh, you then have the potential of being cited with a 5A1 in lieu of not having a specific standard and OSHA to address the particular hazard or risk in place. You have a general duty clause to provide a safe workplace. Next. It is also important that when you're choosing uh, personal fall protection equipment, functionality and purpose are included in the decision. Uh, it, it is important to be aware that there are harnesses designed specifically for women. While most individuals uh, will fit properly uh, off-the-shelf harnesses, both smaller and larger harnesses are available to fit the individual properly. High visibility jackets uh, add both safety and ease of use. Uh, making it more likely to be worn. Uh, choosing a system uh, that is easy to use will make it more likely to be on when a fall occurs. Next. So in summary, uh, all boom lifts, uh, all boom type aerial lifts require personal fall protection equipment in addition to the guardrails. If personal fall protection is used with other types of area work platforms, they must be used in compliance with fall protection standards. The personal fall protection system must incorporate fall restraint when entering the platform and whenever contact can occur with a lower surface. And a fall arrest system can be used to provide more mobility to the work platform when in compliance with regulations and standards. When full arrest is used, a rescue plan must be in place in annual drills performed. A risk assessment and method statement should be incorporated with site safety. Be prepared is the best motto that we can take. And to be prepared, you should plan. And when you plan, you have the method statement and risk assessments uh, taken care of for the proper selection. Uh, and that 
uh, concludes the presentation. So we are now open for questions. Okay, if anyone has any questions, please use the menu bar on the right side. Just uh, click on that plus sign next to the questions. It'll drop down a box. Type your question right in, um, and then if you send that on, uh, I, I'm happy to um, share that question with the audience, and then Tony can answer it. I don't see any questions right now, but I'll give everyone a moment. And in the meantime, I will let you know that today's webinar um, is recorded. So if there's anyone in your organization who was not able to attend today, but you would like them to see the presentation, it'll probably take about a week to two weeks to get it um, edited and ready to post. And then I will forward it on to everyone who attended uh, via email so that you have that to share. Okay, we have our first question. Uh, the presentation was excellent, thank you. Um, is it possible to get written copies? Yes, um, I can um, make a PDF of this presentation and forward that on as well. Um, and I will go ahead and automatically send that to everyone if you're um, um, not interested. Um, that's fine, you know, no problem. But um, for those of you who are, you can share that as well. Uh, Shelly, I would also add that uh, if you want a, you can download that statement of best practice from a website, but if they would like a hard copy, uh, I can uh, get those uh, sent out as well. Okay, great. Any other questions? Okay. Well, Tony, thank you. I think you've, um, you've covered everything, so that's probably good. Um, I'm going to um, put Tony's information up on the screen as well as Jeff and Gary here at Ally, just in case you have any questions on the insurance side about um, any of this. Um, and of course, you can always follow up if you have a question after the presentation. Please feel free um, to drop Tony or Jeff a note. And thank you all for attending today. Um, I hope this was helpful, and I hope we see you at our next webinar. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you all.